Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I was going to do a new series. This series is going to be on advanced manufacturing technologies. And what I'm going to start off with, as far as part one for this series, is going to be additive manufacturing. Now, I typically do all of my subjects in series, you know, on, on a general topic, and then I give smaller topics beneath it. If you want to look up any of my other uh, topics, such as uh, on quality or on metal casting, on GD and T, geometric dimension and tolerancing. You can subscribe to my channel, uh, go through my channel, and actually look up several of my playlists. I keep everything organized by playlist and by major subject heading. So they tend to be very easy to find. You can also subscribe to me on Facebook. Uh, you can follow me on Google Plus, on Twitter. Uh, I have a couple of, of communities that I, I try to keep up to date on, on Google Plus. Uh, you know, for it, one is the engineer's reference, the other one is uh, manufacturing skills and education. So, if you follow me and you are, you're interested in these videos, that's one way you can kind of keep up, keep up with just what I have to offer. So, let's get started on this as far as uh, additive manufacturing. So, you've got additive manufacturing, and you've got another process or family of processes called subtractive manufacturing. Now, when you think of additive manufacturing, you can think of, you know, a raw material, typically in this case in a powdered form. You know, it could be a wire, it could be a filament, but in, let's just say a powdered form. If we were to take that powder and we were actually to put it in a molten state or some other form where it can actually be manipulated, we can actually use that powder to actually start to build a structure. In this particular case, what you're seeing is a laser centering process. So you're taking that powder, you're taking it into a molten state, and you're actually creating a 3D structure from it, a structure that has an X, Y, and Z coordinate. Now you can take and manipulate that, that structure and actually come up with a useful end product. That is the whole idea behind 3D printing or additive manufacturing. Whereas subtractive manufacturing, you start off with a bulk piece of raw stock. In this case, you've got an ingot or a billet down here at the bottom. So you've got a steel billet and you actually start to take material away, sort of like a, a carver or a sculptor taking away, you know, the material to in order to create a final product. In this case, you're, you're milling it away and you end up with uh, the same product you could in 3D manufacturing or 3D printing. So that is the gist behind additive manufacturing versus subtractive manufacturing. Now, what is additive manufacturing? Let's give this a little bit more detail. Now, what you see in that gift on the left is a welding process. Now, welding is just a joining process. You're taking a, a material, in this case, a fusion welding. You're taking a, a, a rod, a consumable rod, and you're actually using it to take it to the molten state and you're actually creating a weld joint okay now imagine you say, take that same weld joint which is just as strong as the component that it's welding and you keep building on top of the weld on top of uh, on top of itself you're actually building one bead of weld on top of another bead of weld on top of another bead of weld what you'll end up with is a structure made of nothing but weld now that is the fundamental thought process behind uh, 3D printing or additive manufacturing. Now I first heard about that concept of taking weld and building it on itself when I was working in the automotive industry. A tool maker actually had a busted component, a broken component, and he took some a welding process, a TIG welder, and actually started building weld on top of the broken joint you know, on top of the broken port portion of the component. In this case, we're looking at an engine block and that's the crankcase bearings. So he started building up weld, building up weld, building up weld, and then finally he machined it back down to its original surface. So he built the weld up, went through a finishing process, milling it down into place, and used that as a repair. You know, 3D printing additive manufacturing has much the same concept behind it that you can take a material, bring it to a molten state, manipulate it, and then bring it to a, through a finishing process and end up with an end product. In this particular case, you know, you have a damage or missing, you know, sometimes chunks of missing material. You welded it and machined it and got a component that was just as good as the original component. 
Another concept I want you to keep in mind when thinking of additive manufacturing is something called physical vapor deposition. Now that's a process that often used in particular in manufacturing for a coating material. So you have a substrate, you have a coating material that you want to put onto that substrate. You go through this physical de vapor deposition where you actually break the material down and you atomize the material and you physically coat a thin layer of the material over the substrate. Again, this goes back to 3D manufacturing or additive manufacturing. That is the same sort of idea of adding a part on top of itself. Imagine you take that coating and you just keep adding onto it until you end up with a product. Now, both of those examples, you know, the building up of weld and using uh, physical vapor deposition are, like I said, they're just examples. I'm about to go into, you know, four more methods of 3D printing or additive manufacturing. You can use those interchangeably to show you more exact. So take, but keep those two examples in mind. Now, the first idea is the one that is probably the most popular, the one that most people understand is 3D printing using a polymer. Now, what you see there is a 3D printer that actually is creating a structure using a plastic resin or a polymer resin, a polymer uh, filament. It's actually taking the filament, running it through a nozzle, you know, in a more pliable state, building it up as actually had a, a, a product programmed in. So a tool path programmed in and it actually creates and builds the structure upon itself. You know, this method of 3D printing or additive manufacturing it can be very flexible. You can, you know, have different colors, different shapes, different geometries. You can make a lot of uh, different types of parts. You know, geometry is very, very, very versatile uh, process. It's oftentimes used with prototypes. It can be used with the finished product. You know, there are 3D printed uh, uses in the medical industry. Uh, prosthetic limbs can be made through 3D printing. Uh, oftentimes it's used in, in the dental industry. Dental industry. So this is a, a very versatile process that actually uses a polymer filament to actually build your final product. Another type of 3D printing is a wood polymer composite. Now, this was something that I saw, again, in the automotive industry. Uh, it was used originally when I noticed it was for prototyping, but it turns out that it can be used for a, a lot of different uh, uh, products. You know, it, again, uses a filament to brings the filament up to 350 to 480 degrees Fahrenheit. It goes through a, a nozzle and you can layer it and end up with a product. Like I said, this was originally, or the first time I saw this, it was used for uh, uh, prototyping. You know, the end, end result is a wood and polymer uh, product that you can actually finish and get a really nice surface finish to it um, You know, and, and use for study. And, and if you needed to make changes, needed to make modifications, you could go back and adjust and you know, redo and then end up with a, a new product. Now, another is 3D printing using ceramic materials. In this particular case, it's actually a cement, a very fast drying, fast set up cement. This is a gift from Beijing where this 3D printer, which is like 20 feet tall, is actually being used to, for housing. One of the products they made was a 12,000 square foot mansion. Again, what you see on the left is the product being uh, manufactured, being printed. So that's the, the walls that are actually being made for the structure. Down here is just the engineer working, uh, you know, standing near the walls. So you can see the structure is the same. This is just a little, little more distance to it. The walls are actually built from the bottom up. And of course, there's a facade on this building to so that you don't have all the little ripples in it. But it's still, you know, it's a 3D printed building. This is also used to make several uh, affordable housing. I think 10 affordable housing units in this particular project. And these houses were actually able to be completed in one day. The longest part of this was the cement actually curing, you know, so that it could actually be suitable to to be put into place and, and you know have the build completed. Now, a lot of the uh, additive manufacturing is using metal. 
much like I described earlier where there's a powder that's being heated up brought to a molten state and then just being added like a well and that's what this vision is uh, this gif is showing you It's known as liquid metal deposition LMD now again much like with the weld I showed you earlier in the video it's actually made up in various layers you know and then actually uh, finished until you end up with a component that has the surface finish that you actually desire this is being used a lot in the manufacturing industry particularly in aerospace and some in uh, the defense industry so you can see this making up a lot of different types of components you know the, the shapes can be very complex you know again it can be set up very quickly and make a, a very versatile manufacturing process and then the last one I wanted to talk about was direct laser metal centering now in this particular process the unit is still being programmed in through a CAD, pro, uh, CAM, CAD model your powder is actually being uh, moved over and laser centered in various passes again the part is created from the bottom up and as you can see as one layer of the powdered metal gets centered more uh, powdered metal is brushed over to the top and then that gets centered until finally you end up with the completed structure now this is again a lot of this is being used in the aerospace industry as you can see you're able to make really complicated geometries there you have turbine blades which can be a very difficult thing to machine you're able to avoid things like chatter you know, and other complexities with making thin metal thin uh, thin wall parts now some downsides the surface finish on this is dependent on how it's oriented you know the surface finish on the top components the horizontal components are very different from the surface finish from the uh, components that are actually sitting vertically so a lot of times uh, different types of finishing processes are put into place in order to get this back to the surface finish that you desire now this was a very brief overview on 3d uh, printing or additive manufacturing uh, go ahead and like comment and subscribe if you want me to go into more detail on these processes I, I just wanted to introduce you to the different processes and the different materials but if you'd like for there to be more detail into the, any particular part of 3d printing particularly in this series of advanced manufacturing go ahead and leave me a comment you know let me know what you think if you found this video useful or if it helped you out in any way go ahead and share it uh, you know and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of what I have to offer again this is Professor Cummings uh, thanks for watching the video